Please stand for our call of worship. <clears throat> we come together with one voice to sing a new song of praise to God. It is a joy, joy to exult in the Lord our God within, within the, the gathering of God's saints. We come together with one voice to praise and thank our eternal maker. Our generous God responds to our worship and praises us with more blessings. We come together with one voice because as God's committed people, we celebrate and rejoice together. How gracious is our God who finds delight in our praises and our songs and the music filling this sacred space. Together, Together, let us worship God. God. Good morning. morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We want to say a special word of welcome to any new first time visitors that we have here today. I don't know, we may have some. Um, If you are a first time visitor, please put a card in the worship, in the offering plate that we may have a record of your attendance with us here today. If you'd like to know more about the church, speak to an usher or the pastor or me and um, after the service. We have a few announcements today. Most of these are in the bulletin, but I'm going to tell you anyway, so you'll be sure to know about them. Uh, Next Saturday is November 11th, and it'll be the men's breakfast on that day. And since it is November 11th, which is Veterans Day, we're particularly trying to find veterans to attend the breakfast along with anybody else, any other men that want to come. So if you can come, do. If you have a veteran you want to bring with you, do. Just let the office know so we'll have enough, what is it, Jack, eggs to eat? Whatever. So, and then while we're eating, on Wednesday night, we're having the chili cook-off. So bring your favorite chili. And I think they have a new way of fixing the voting is the year for which one is the best one. So we'll see how that works out. Um, one last thing, uh, it is getting the cooler time of the year and Compassionate Hands will be starting up housing folks in the annex here soon. So next Saturday, or two weeks, November 11th, will be a cleanup, fix up. Let's get the annex ready for our Compassionate Hand visitors. So if uh, you can help with that, it would be appreciated. Uh, Is there any other information to be shared with the church at this time? Sure. Thank you, David. I will make another mention about the chili cook-off. This is something we do each year, and there are some wonderful chili cooks out there. So if you're a chili cook, bring your best. If you're not a chili cook, show up anyway, and you can vote. And we will be voting with our dollars or our pennies or whatever you want to put in for your what you think is the best chili, and then we'll be using that money for a good cause. 
Um, so come on Wednesday night, and with your chili, it'll be fun. Let us come now and open our hearts to worship God through confession of our sins. We know how easy it is to do exactly the opposite of what God calls us to do. So now let us take this opportunity to draw closer to God and to confess our failures and our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Join me now in our prayer of confession. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that we are indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way that joined with those from ages past who have served you with faith, hope, and love. May we inherit the kingdom you promised in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our assurance of pardon. This is God's eternal covenant. Through the miracle of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Go out into this world, proclaiming his name to all you meet. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please join with me reading together our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find wisdom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke. This is the story of what we call the Last Supper, Jesus taking the Passover meal with his disciples. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you 
before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then the disciples began to ask one another which one of them it would be who would do this. This is the word of the Lord. After that joyful sound, I'd like to invite young folks to come forward. Come on down. Yes, if you're this tall or below, you've got to come forward. Come on, guys.
hello. So today is a very interesting day here in the church. We call it All Saints Day. Does that mean anything? Yeah? Okay, first of all, I'll just ask the question. What's a saint? A saint? A saint is somebody that we think is a really good Christian. Yeah, so, you know, a good person, we call them saints. Now, some churches, they have special saints. I mean, these are super-duper Christians who've done amazing things. And they go, well, these are our saints. Okay, that's great. There's like St. Francis or St. Anthony, or St. Jerome, the whole list of saints. St. Saint, uh, Julian of Norwich, who was a woman, we just can't forget her. But in our church, we say that a saint is anybody who believes in Jesus. So that means you're a saint, you're a saint, you're a saint, you're a saint, you're a saint. All those people out there are saints. Everybody, look around, look around, look around. Yep. See them? There they are. All right. Now look back towards me. All right. Now look at them. Now look back towards me. See? All right. You got it. Saints. Yep. And you're a saint. And there are people in our lives who we think are special, and we call them saints. Maybe, maybe somebody that's already died. You know, like my father. He died a couple of years ago. He was very old. He lived a great life. And now I think of him as a saint. Yeah, but it was okay. It's okay. Anybody watch football yesterday? Anybody? Yeah? Good. Me too. And how many people are in those football stadiums? Hundreds, thousands. I mean, there's so many people. Oh, it's just full and it goes up. What if you were standing? Yeah. What if you were standing there on the field, you're a football player, and you look out? And they're all those people, and they're there. It's amazing. That, I think, is what, it, what saints are like. Well, saints, hold on, they're all around us, watching over us. We don't know all of them, but we look around and just use my imagination. All those Christians who've been out there, they, they might have lived a long time ago. But it's not just here, but it goes on and on. You, so many you can't even see all of them. But, what? Um, but my favorite team is the orange team. Yeah, your favorite team is the orange team. Because I have... <laughs> I know your brother. I know where this is going. His name is Aussie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, orange team. Lots of orange people watching football. But imagine that those are saints watching down and caring for you. That's what they are. So we're going to remember some of the people in a few moments and a whole bunch of people that we love and that we miss in our lives because they are saints. But remember, you're a saint too. Let's pray. Holy God, we are thankful for all the saints in our lives, the people who teach us about who you are and show us how to act as Christians. And all the children of God said, Amen. All right. High five, high five, high five, high five. There you go. All right. Today I'm starting a new sermon series. It'll go for four weeks, and the title of this series is What's New About the New Covenant? And central to this series, not surprisingly, is the idea of covenant. What is a covenant? But first, if we are going to talk about covenant, then we've got to start at the beginning, at the beginning with creation. In the beginning, the cosmos existed in chaos. But God patiently and methodically brought order to this chaos by first separating the light 
from the dark and the water from the dry land and then by creating life. And among the life that he created was humankind. And then in another story, we're told how God places these new humans in this idyllic setting, a garden, where they might live with God in comfort and in safety. But they, they weren't happy with that. They desired more. In fact, they desired to be like gods themselves. And so they sinned. And the consequence of the sin was to be cast out into the harsh world. The Bible follows the descendants of those who are cast out. And then we read about a great flood and even a odd little tale about how these people tried to build a tower that reached up into heaven. But things really get going when God reaches out to two specific people, Abraham and Sarah. And God calls these two into covenant. Now, I will talk about covenants in depth later in this series. It's something that fascinates me. But for now, it's enough just to view a covenant as being an agreement between two parties. It's like a contract. Now, the covenant that God made with Abraham and Sarah was this, that God would make of them a great nation with innumerable descendants. And God would make it so that the name Sarah and Abraham alone would be a blessing to all people. And so Abraham and Sarah agree to this, and they follow God to a new land, leaving their homes behind and their family, and they travel to this new land of Canaan. And there they have a son. They name him Isaac. Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons whose descendants would be known as the Israelites. The story of the Israelites continues into Egypt and then into the wilderness and then to the promised land. And all the while, through these generations, God remains faithful to the covenant promise. But the people aren't. And sadly, time after time, the people sin and they break their side of the covenant. And so God sends prophets. He sends prophets to the people to show them the way back to the fold. But the people, they continue to stray. And then finally, God decides to take matters into his own hands. And he comes to us as one of us in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus who is fully human and still fully God. And he lives a human life teaching and preaching about how people might find their way back to the Lord. He seeks to remind us that God is loving and gracious and forgiving in all things. And God wants nothing more to be with us in relationship. And so through miracles and deeds of power, Jesus shows us that he is indeed here with us. And in our scripture reading for today, Jesus even proclaims himself not to be the covenant, but to be the new covenant. And this doesn't mean that the old covenant that God made with Abraham and Sarah has been erased. No. But Christ will become the final and concluding iteration of God's covenant with humanity. The reading from Scripture takes place at a meal. Now, this shouldn't be surprising since so much of what Jesus does involves meals and food. This one takes place at a Passover feast, a very specific meal. And the Passover feast commemorates the occasion of the Israelites escaping Egypt. And it was on the night, the last night that they were going to be in Egypt, that the angel of God passes over 
the country, passes over the houses of the Israelites and sparing them, but bringing death into the homes of the Egyptians. Now, in Jesus' day, this Passover feast was extraordinarily popular, and Jews from all corners of the world converged on Jerusalem to celebrate together. That's what Jesus and the disciples have done. They've come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And this particular Passover, the one that we read about, is the one that we also call the Last Supper, which is Jesus' final meal before his crucifixion. For this feast, Jesus and his disciples have rented a room, probably some sort of early event space, and they brought the food, they purchased the groceries, and now they're at table together. And Jesus tells them that he is going to suffer very soon and that he is eager to share this meal with them before he does suffer. And then he takes a loaf of bread from the table and he holds it up for them. And he offers a blessing of thanks. And then he takes the bread and he breaks it into pieces and hands it out to them saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now this meal, the Passover meal, is a highly ritualized event. Every part of it has a meaning or a story. Every dish, every cup is part of the story. The bread, the bread, for example, represents the unleavened bread that the Israelites took with them in their haste to escape Pharaoh's army. They did not have time for the bread to rise. Imagine you're at Thanksgiving and the host holds up the cranberry sauce and says, this sauce is a reminder of the blood spilled by our ancestors as they fought the oppressive forces of Black Friday. But what Jesus is doing here, they laughed at the early service. Come on. <laughs> but what Jesus is doing here is redefining the Passover meal. No longer does this particular meal celebrate the freedom from slavery to the Egyptians. No, it now symbolizes something else. Freedom of slavery to sin. And he's telling his disciples that this bread now represents his body. Not the unleavened bread of Passover, but the bread is his body. And from now on, when they take this bread, they are to remember him. And he does the same thing with a cup of wine, holding it up. He says, this cup that is poured out for you, this is the new covenant of my blood. Now, as Jews... They would all know about the covenant with Abraham and Sarah, but now they hear Jesus define himself as being the new covenant. Jesus comes to us as God's covenant promise to bring us back into the fold of God. But as we know, because of our sins, we can't do this ourselves. We can't will it or work it. No matter how many good deeds we attempt, we can never overwrite our sins. And the only way, the only way that we can gain entry into the kingdom is with God's help. It's not something we can do ourselves. We require God's forgiveness and God's mercy. And there's only one thing, only one remittance that will offset the death of our sin. And that is the sacrifice of the one who had no sin. The new covenant comes to us through the pouring out of the blood of Jesus. And through this new covenant, by means of this new covenant, our sins are forgiven. And the doors of God's kingdom become open to us. Now, 
right there, that should be enough for us, shouldn't it? That's the new covenant. That's what it offers us. But what exactly does it mean for us? Is there more that we can gather from this? Can we dig a bit deeper? And the answer is yes. And I want to do that now in three lessons that I have derived from this passage on the new covenant. The first lesson is this. In the new covenant, we are all welcome at the table. As I mentioned, much of what we read about Jesus involves meals and food. Jesus eats with tax collectors and sinners. He tells parables about a wedding feast. He goes to Zacchaeus' house, the chief tax collector, for a meal. He feeds 5,000 people with some scraps of fish and bread. I believe that if Jesus were to appear to us today, it'd be on the food network. But what's so remarkable, what's so remarkable here is that Jesus doesn't turn anyone away from a table. He eats with the sinners. He eats with the tax collectors. And nowhere is this more important, apparent than in our reading today. Did you notice who's at the table? Well, it's the disciples, but it also includes Judas. And after lifting the cup, Jesus says to them at the table, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is now on this table. Judas had already made the arrangements with the authorities to hand over Jesus he would leave this meal in a few moments and go and alert them to his whereabouts. And Jesus knows this, but he allows Judas to dine at the table. Judas is included in the fellowship despite what he has done and what he is about to do. Now, let's not for a moment think that the rest of the disciples themselves are perfect. They aren't. They have all betrayed Jesus in their own little ways. They fight and argue over who among them is the best disciple and who's going to sit at Jesus' right hand. They run from the authorities when in danger. Jesus, uh, J Peter himself will deny knowing Jesus. The disciples are far from perfect exemplars of the faith. And we are like that. We also sin. We turn from God. We betray Jesus in our small ways. But through some mercy that we can't comprehend, we are still welcomed at the table. And in a moment, we will make that real as we gather for communion. There is no fence here. There's no bouncers at the door. There's no Walmart greeter checking your receipts. There is us and the table, and the Spirit of God moving through us. Now, in the second lesson, the second lesson that I see here is that in the new covenant, we are called to change. In the first lesson, we are welcomed at the table, but in the second, it goes a bit further. We're not only welcome, but when we come to the table, we are called to change. We are challenged to act as Jesus acts. We are challenged, well, first of all, to accept all people. We are challenged to come to the table, not just with our family and friends, but even with those who might want to cause us hurt. Now, it breaks my heart when I hear someone say that they don't feel worthy to be in church. And when they say that, I just want to hug them and say, you are the person that Christ wants most in this fellowship. You are the one that Christ wants, not because you claim to be perfect, but because you recognize that you are broken. And you come here with humility. The new covenant calls us not just to the table, but it calls us to change who we are to become more like Christ. The third lesson for today is that in the new covenant, 
we can experience God's kingdom. We are called to the table and accepted to the table. We are called to change, and now we are called to experience the kingdom. Since those first humans were cast out of the garden, God has sought to open his glorious realm back to us. And the kingdom, it's here. It's around us, but we're not ready for it. It's our sin that prevents us from entering. And occasionally, in wonderful moments of compassion or grace, we do catch just a little glimpse of the kingdom out there. It's enough to remind us of its presence, that it is real. At the Passover table, Jesus told his disciples, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he says this to the disciples to let them know that the kingdom is near and the new covenant is bringing it closer to us. And through this new covenant of Jesus Christ, we shall behold the glories of God's kingdom and we will feast at God's table. So on this day, this day that we gather here in the presence of God, we gather around the table, let us rejoice in the sacred gift of God's new covenant with us. Amen. Affirm what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are with us each day, offering so many blessings into our lives. And now we bring these gifts in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. Oh Lord, bless these gifts and the lives that these gifts represent. 
We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Your offering will now be taken. we do remember the wonderful saints of our church and of our lives. So I invite you now to find the insert in your bulletin 
and I will begin and ask that you respond with the words in bold. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. God of the ages, we praise you for all your servants who have done justice, loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. For apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place who in life and death have witnessed to your truth. We praise you, O God. For all your servants who have faithfully served you, witnessed bravely and died in faith, who are still shining lights in the world. For those no longer remembered, who earnestly sought you in darkness, who held fast their faith in trial and served others. For those we have known and loved, who by their faithful obedience and steadfast hope have shown the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, especially Patricia Clymer, who died on November 16th, 2022. Lydia McVicker, who died January 19th, 2023. Mildred Gaston, who died August 4th, 2023. Lois Bradshaw, who died September 7th, 2023. In addition, I would like to read the names that were submitted to us this week, the names of saints that are personal to each of you. Joanne Adams, Charles Barnes, Ray Barnes, Jean Barnes, Catherine Batchelor, Charles Bradshaw, Gordon Bone, Betty Clay, Edie Clark, Kathy Cook, Jerry Kaufman, Mr. and Mrs. Comer Donnell, Comer L. Donnell, Mary Ann Denny, Judy Denny, Ray Dykes, Robert Eddington, Dr. and Mrs. Edward H. Evans, David Evans, Ned Evans, Dorothy Fouch, William Osborne Fouch, Jack Howard, Betty Hill, Eleanor Howell, Bakar Hussani, Patricia Kopp, Wendell Kopp, Wendell Knox, Jay McVicker, Sam McVicker, June Perrin, Claudine Prowl, James Robinson, J.C. Rollins, Kelly Roy, Carol Simon, Francis Sellers, John Sellers, Sarah Stanford, Newt Trail, Carmen Taylor, Nell Taylor, Oline Taylor, Ruth Thompson, Roy Walford, Philip West, Frank Weatherford, Jr. Keep us grateful for their witness, and like them, eager to follow in the way of Christ. Then at last, bring us with them to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I would like to ask the elders to come forward, please.
Christ in you. Friends, indeed, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in God's holy kingdom. All who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are invited to this table. All are welcomed. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites those who put their trust in him to share this feast which he has prepared for us. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. How good it is on this day of joy to lift our glad songs of praise to you. You planted your steadfast love in the gardens of creation, but we chose to eat the bitter fruit of idolatry and sin. Prophets came in your name, bringing your gracious word, but we could not hear them call our name. When we were about to perish, you sent the one who would bear that threat away. So therefore, on this day and every day, with those in heaven and with those on earth, we lift our glad cries to you. Bring us to salvation. He releases us from the grip of sin, walking through the darkness of death. He leads us into the light of your kingdom. As we believe what we may not understand, we trust that mystery that we call faith. Almighty God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, the saints and martyrs and faithful people in every age, so that strengthened by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup and upon us who seek to be your children. When we are done eating and drinking with the risen Lord, send us forth to feed the hungry. Send us out as servants to the poor and oppressed in our world. And now hear us as we continue our prayer using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his betrayal and arrest, and after giving thanks to God, Jesus took the bread and lifted it up, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. And then in the same way, following the meal, he took the cup and pouring it out, he said, this covenant, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide for us the true bread from heaven, and that is your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is our new covenant, grant that we who have received this sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, and that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. And all the people said, Amen. Amen.